Hello everybody, my name is Jamie Cloninger, the Board Game Man. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Today we're going to go back to 1987. You've seen the movie. You might have ridden the ride at Disneyland. It is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Let's go to the gamer's table and I'll show you how to play. and welcome to the gamers table here is the board game for who framed roger rabbit it's a pretty good sized game um, i'm going to go ahead and show you the components i'll show you how to set up and i'll show you the game how to play it so first of all we have the board and you also have the goo right here dun, 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 and it spins in the middle all you really do is if you have not put this together yet you'll have the spinner here and then you'll have a little plastic piece they actually give you two of these which is nice and it looks like this. It's a real small little piece that you put in the middle. Luckily, they, uh, there was two in here. So I have a spare one just in case this one ever uh, breaks or whatever. All you really do is just kind of put it in the middle. You line up the hole and you bink, put it in there and it stays in there. So it actually can spin too, which is pretty cool. So I wanted to start you off with that. So the game comes with identity cards. And this is what, you're gonna, what each player is going to have. You can either be Dolores... Eddie Valiant, Jessica Rabbit, and of course, Roger Rabbit. So these are the identity cards each player will get. You also get a set of small cards and big cards for every color. So say player blue will get, you're gonna get two cards of each character. So you'll see, for instance, this Roger Rabbit, the bottom section, and then you have another Roger Rabbit with the top section that's colored. Okay, and I'll be going over that during the game. Same with Jessica Rabbit, you get the bottom portion, and then you get the top portion. Every player, all four of the, um, the players that are in here, the Eddie Valiant, Dolores, Jessica Rabbit, and Roger Rabbit, each set, each player gets the same cards, okay? Along with a dip cannon card, which there's the dip cannon there, and four of these weasel cards. As you can see here, there's, you got Smart Guy, Psycho, Wheezy and Greasy. So you'll so every player will have each character, top and bottom, four weasel cards, and also a dip cannon card, along with their playing piece, their corresponding color. So you see here we got blue for this, we got purple for that, green and red. So there's four different uh, colors to choose from. Okay. We also have the ID sheet, and we'll be going over this. This is when you're trying to figure out your other player's identity, which character you think they are. So we'll go over this as well. So this is part of the components. You also have the weasel token, which we'll go over that as well. This is when uh, you actually find the will and that you can actually use the weasel to chase down the player that has it, and you can try to steal the will from that player. So that's this. You also have four confidential cards that are on the board. Three of these are simple little letters to Jessica Rabbit. And there's one of them that you're trying to get is the my last will, just like in the movie. So three of these are just letters, and one of them is the actual will. And this is what you're trying to go for in the game. You also have these cool dice. You have a white die, which is the kind of die you put stickers. This was already on there when I bought the game. I bought this from an estate sale uh, months back. Um, and this is one to six here. You also have a black die that's one, two, or three, which you've probably seen this uh, die in a couple other games. Uh, it looks very familiar. So you're going to roll these two die. And in the game, I'll be going over this, these, die, these dice here. Yeah, let's see. We've got a... Let me make sure we get these right. We've got the weasel die, which you show here. We've got the weasel here the weasel and then you also got the weasel that gets clunked in the head so you got three good one or four good ones and then one that cl gets clunked in the head you also have a benny a little car there you go you get the benny die so you have all the bennies on here and then you have a stop sign okay you also have 
make sure I get this right, the trolley die. You see you got the trolleys on there and all that good stuff, and this also has a stop sign. And last and certainly not least, we have the dip die. Where here's the dip, all the, good, the dip, and then you have one that has the dip with the little red line going through it. So technically you have five big white dice and one black die. You also have, in the, which is interesting, is you have the instructions. This is the instruction booklet. So it tells you the rules and the gameplay and whatnot. And what's funny is when I was I was trying to look for the setup, and it was it, it's on the insert that's inside the box. So here's what the insert looked. Took it out of the box here. Here's the insert that shows you the setup. Well, and what's funny is when I got this game, it was upside down, like this. So I'm sitting here looking, going through the the instructions, going, "How do you set this up?" I couldn't find it, and then I, I eventually I turned it over. I'm like, "Oh, geez." So why they separated the setup from the instructions, I don't know, but. But hopefully you have both of these in your box if you do have the game. So this is the setup here, and then the instructions are different. So this is actually the gameplay, and this is how you set up the game. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they separated them like that, but there must have been a reason. So anyway, you also have two of these um, cards here. This just kind of shows you, they're like, uh, you know, if you need to go to them. But it's actually pretty simple. I mean, they're all the same thing. You have one for Benny die, trolley die. Gives you little instructions what happens when you roll the dice. Dip cannon and also the weasel die. It's actually pretty simple. I don't know why they even made these, but that's okay. We'll go over that as well. And that's pretty much all the components in the game that you have. Now let's show you the setup. So we're going to do a two-player game. We're going to go ahead and do blue and purple since these are the two closest uh, colors by me. So we're going to go ahead and take the red and the green out of the game. So we're going to take everything out of the game. We're going to put it in the box. Okay. So like I said, each player is going to get the set of big cards, small cards, which consist of the, the dip cannon and the four weasel cards. So we'll put these. Let's see, let me move this up. Well, actually, I want to move this down so we actually can see the board a little better. So I'll put these on the side of the board here. That way I can put this a little closer to the camera. Hopefully you can see it a little better. Put this this way. There we go. Something like that. Okay. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, give each player an identity card. So we'll do uh, well, we'll do Jessica and Roger. Why not? So so the pink player, the I'm sorry, the purple player would be one, and the blue player would be the other one. The other two cards go into the box because we're only doing a two player. And let's see how we set this up. So I'm going to take the dice off the box here. This is how I set up the game. So each player is going to take a pawn and all the large and small cards with the color backs uh, that match the chosen pawn color. So like I showed you before, in the cards here, you're going to have a top and bottom Roger Rabbit. You're going to have a top and bottom Jessica Rabbit. Okay. You're also going to get a Dolores top and bottom. And you're also going to get an Eddie Valiant top and bottom. And you'll also get a Judge Doom. This is regarding uh, when you want to shoot the dip cannon. So you're going to get one of these as well. So each player has one of these as well. So you're going to get all those cards along with the small cards, which I showed you before, the four weasels and the dip cannon. So you're going to start off by doing that. Now, each player is going to take an ID sheet and a pencil. And the pencils are not included, by the way. Uh, write the names of the players in the spaces underneath their pawn color. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take the ID sheet, and I'll just go ahead and put my name, and I'll put my wife Linda on there. So what we'll do is I'll be blue, so you're going to put blue, you're, I'm going to put Jamie, and then we'll say Linda is purple, so you put her name under purple, like so. Okay, so that's how you're going to put the names underneath the color on the ID sheet, You'll do just like that. Okay, after you do that... The next item on the bids here is you're going to setting up the confidential cards. Here are the four cards we were talking about earlier. These are the confidential cards I was telling you about where three of them are Jessica Rabbit letters and one of them is the will. Now, it depends on how many players you have in the game is how many uh, will or how many um, Jessica Rabbit cards or letters there are. So setting up the confidential cards. The confidential cards consist of one will card and three Jessica letters. The number of players determine which cards will be placed on the game board. Put any extra cards out of play. 
So in this case, we're going to do a two-player game. So we're just going to have a Will card and one Jessica letter. That's all we're going to have in this game. So what we'll do is we're going to take the one, there's the Will, and we'll take one of these letters. The other two go back in the box. At least for this game. Shuffle these cards and place each one face down in a different confidential card space on the game board. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So these are the confidential spaces in the corners. So let's see. The confidential spaces are these spaces right here. These four spaces. Okay. So what we'll do is we're going to shuffle these up. I won't even look. And we're going to put them in two different spaces. So we're going to put them in two different spaces there. So if obviously if you have a four-player game, you'll put one here and put one here as well. But we're only doing a two-player, so we'll just do that. Okay. Next, one player removes the four gray identity cards from the large deck, shuffles them, and, de and deals each player one face down card. If any extra cards out of the play, be sure to keep your identity secret from the other players. So obviously, you're the only one that's going to know who you are because during the game, you're going to try to figure out who is who, which we already did that already. Setting up your color cards. These are these cards here, the big ones, not the small ones, but the big ones. Okay. Okay, what you're going to do in step one is you're going to turn the weasel cards and the dip cannon face up in front of you. So all the players will do the same thing. So let's move this over here a little bit. So all you're going to do is you're going to put your weasel cards face up in front of you. Okay, so we're going to put those face up here along with the dip cannon. So all these are face up. Same with the purple player. Oh, whoa, whoa, there go the cards. Ah. Okay, we'll do this here. This goes here. This didn't get myself much room because it's going to go off the board. I want to make sure you guys can see everything. So we're going to put all four and the dip cannon there. Let me grab the cards off the floor here. There we go. Okay. So now all the cards are face up. Well, the uh, weasel cards and the dip cannon. Step two is each player secretly prepares a pile of six cards that will be placed on the game board by doing the following in order. You're going to look at your identity card to see who you are. Okay, I'm going to be Roger Rabbit, and Linda's going to be Jessica Rabbit. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. Now, you're going to remove the two character cards that show the top and bottom of your identity and place them in the face down pile. Remove the two character cards that show the top and the bottom of your identity and place them in a face down pile. So what you're going to do is, for instance, for Linda, she's going to take out the top and bottom of Jessica Rabbit. So she's going to take these two out and put them in the face down pile. So we'll put them over here, face down. Same with me. I'm going to go through mine. I'm going to take Roger Rabbit, top and bottom, out, and put them face down in front of me. I'll put these face down in front of me. Okay, so just, just like that. Now, add your Judge Doom card to this pile. So you're also going to get your Judge Doom card that you have, which is this card here, and you're going to put that face down in that pile as well. One of the cards I didn't see. There we go. There's our Doom card. Okay, so we're going to put that face down along with the, your character top and bottom off to the side. Add one character card for each of the remaining three characters to this pile. One character card for each of the remaining three characters to this pile. Be sure you do not add both the top and bottom cards to create another full character. Okay, so you're going to either put the top or the bottom of each of the other characters in that pile as well. For this mic, for Linda's Dawn pile, she's going to put either one of these. So we're going to put the top of Dolores... She's going to put the top of Roger Rabbit, and we'll do the bottom of Eddie Valiant in her stack, which will keep these three in front of her. Okay, same with this. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the bottom of Eddie Valiant. I'll do the top of Dolores and the top of Jessica Rabbit. I'll put that there. Okay, so that's how you do that. You now have a six-card pile. So let's see. Make sure we have a six-card pile. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So we both have a six card pile. Okay. Place your remaining three character cards aside for use later in the game. Keep them face down. So the three that are remaining, you keep those face down in front of you. 
Then what you're going to do is you're going to place one card from your six card pile face down in each of the six location sections on the game board shown in figure one. So figure one, it shows the six locations. And these are going to be the A1A1 factory. You got the terminal bar. You got the rock and paint, uh, ink and paint club, Valiant's office, Maroon's office, and Toontown. So that's what you're going to do with your six cards that you put face down. You're going to go ahead and mix these up here. And you're going to put one in each one of these rooms. Face down. Okay. Same with the other players. You're going to do the same thing. Okay. That's what you do with your six cards. Place your pawn on the character home space closest to you. It does not matter which character's name is on the space. So, for instance, if uh, you know Linda was sitting over here, she would put her purple uh, thing right. Maybe she could put it right on Roger Rabbit there. And I could just maybe put it on Eddie Valiant. It does, it does not have to match who you are. You don't want to do that anyway because you're trying to figure out who's who. So that's why it doesn't matter what corner you choose. The closest to you is how you do it. And there, my friends, is the setup. That is how you set up the game. Okay. Now let's go into the gameplay. All right, so now we're going to show you how the movement of the game goes. So first of all, you're, how you move is you're going to take the white die and the black die. You're going to roll both of these, okay? So you're going to roll both dice. Okay, so we have a four, white four and a black two. Now what you do is you're going to move the amount of spaces on the white die. So say I go one, two, three, four, and if I choose... I can also move the number that's on the black die as well. You do not have to. So if I wanted to move two more spaces, I could if I want, but I don't have to. Now in this case, I'm gonna say, no, I'm gonna go ahead and pass because I am on a Benny space, as you see here. And that's what I'm gonna show you next about the Benny die. So if you land on a Benny space, exactly. If you want to try to get additional spaces, this is when the Benny die comes into play. And what happens with the Benny die, the only thing is you can roll the die. Oh, I rolled a stop sign. So when you roll a stop sign, that means your turn ends. That's it. Now, if I were to roll a Benny, say I rolled a, let me try it again. Okay, see, I rolled a Benny. I can move one space either way. I can go this way or I can go this way. I can continually roll the Benny die if I want to. Or I can stop whenever I want. So say I want to try to get another space. I can roll it again. Oh, I got another Benny. I can move one more space. You can keep doing this as long as you want until you just want to quit and say I'm done. Or if you roll the stop sign, then your, team, then your turn is done. So this is all the Benny areas here. Now say you want to take the trolley. The trolley spaces are all along the outer part. You can see the little railroad tracks, the train tracks here. That's the trolley. Now, if you want to head down to the trolley, then what you do is you're going to head down this way. And as soon as you hit the train tracks, your, game, your turn would end, no matter what your, your roll is. As soon as you reach the track, your turn ends. And then you go to the trolley die. The trolley die acts exactly the same as the Benny die. You roll it, you get a trolley, you move one space. You roll it again, oh, you got a stop sign. That means your turn ends and the player piece stops where it's at. Same identical thing with Benny. All right. Now, don't forget your two objectives in the game. First, you're trying to search for your opponent's identities. And then second, you're trying to find the will and bring it to your home space. All righty. So, so in this case, my home space would be Eddie Valiant because this is where I started from. Linda would be Roger Rabbit because that's where she started from. Now, in this game, there's only two confidential cards. Obviously, if you have a four-player game, you're going to have to look through you know, a, a couple more to find out, you know, to get to catch up to the will. Okay, so that's the movement. Now, let's go for the searching for the player's identities. When you move around the game board, you're trying to stop in each of the six location sections to look at the color cards there and guess the other player's identities. This is how you do it. Okay. Okay, so when you're wanting to look at one of the, some of the cards that are in the, the areas here, you got the six different areas, you have to either be, you have to be on an adjacent space that's not on a Benny space, a trolley space, 
or a road space. So pretty much the spaces that you see that are clear, like here, these are clear. If you're on any one of these, you are allowed to look at the cards. This is the road, so if you're over here, you're not allowed to look at it. If you're on this road here, you're not allowed to look on it, okay? If you're on a Benny space, you're not allowed to look on it. If you're on a trolley space that's on the bottom, you're not allowed to look at it. You're only allowed to look at it on these clear adjacent spaces. Same for here. If you want to look at Toontown, you would have to be either here or here in order to look at the, the Toontown, or here, because this is an adjacent space to Toontown as well. So you got here, here, and here, you're allowed to look at Toontown. Same over here. See, these the way these are clear. They're just white squares. There's nothing underneath them. So these would be okay. These would be okay. And these would be okay to look at the terminal bar. Okay. But you can't look at it if you're here on the trolley or this road. Okay. I know it's a little confusing, but that's what the instructions say. So say I was uh, right here. I would be able to look at that, those cards. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the game, uh, the game board cards and this is how you're gonna that's this is when the id sheet comes into play so what i'm going to do is the game board cards will feature either the top or the bottom of a character keep track of the halves you see by marking your id sheet okay so this is what you're going to do you're going to take your id sheet see this is this is me okay this will be on um, yeah this will be my sheet let me get my pen i'm gonna look at these cards and i'm gonna say oh if I find a Judge Doom card that's opposite mine, that's not mine. So say this is, I'm blue, Linda's purple. If I find this Judge Doom card, I am able to take it for myself. I cannot take my own Judge Doom card, only the opponents. Okay, so if that's the case, if I get this, I can put this face up in front of me. Okay. Okay, so now I have her Judge Doom, Doom card, and now it's going to be... Uh, her turn. Now let's just say she rolled the die. You know, let's say, we'll just roll it here. We go to a five. So she can do five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. She chooses, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go the two spaces. I'm gonna go ahead and look at these cards here. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna look at my card. Of course, if you have other players there, if you have a four-player game, she's gonna look at the three other cards. Because she don't care about what her card shows, she cares about what the other player's card shows. So since it's only two players showing to look at mine, I am blue. Now she sees the bottom half of Eddie Valiant. So what she's going to do is on her ID sheet, okay, she's going to go to Jamie and she's going to look at the bottom of Eddie Valiant here. Because each one of these players has a top and bottom, just like the pictures, okay. So what she's going to do is she's going to go ahead and fill in the bottom of Eddie Valiant because that's what is in color on the card. Okay, and then she replaces it in the stack there. Okay, and that's the end of that turn. Say I roll, and I'm over here, and I'm like, okay, I get the three, one, two, three. I want to look at hers that's right here, okay? Because I'm on an adjacent space. It's a clear space, so I'm able to take a peek. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look. She's purple, so I'm going to look at the purple card. Oh, just so happens. The bottom of Eddie Valiant. <laughs> so I'm going to look under Linda. I'm going to go, okay, bottom of Eddie Valiant. I'm going to go ahead and mark that off on my ID sheet. And no one else is to see your ID sheet. You're doing this on your own, um, you know, privately. So I did that, okay. And I put that, return that to the stack. Because if you have three or four players, obviously they're going to want to look at that also. So now she comes over, say she comes over here. She's, oh, da -da 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 -da. She's over here. She's going to look at this card, the blue card, and the Judge Doom card. She gets Now she gets to take my uh, dip cannon, which I'll show you momentarily how we uh, use the dip cannon, which is in the middle here. Okay, So she takes this and puts the face up amongst her cards. Now we both have a Judge Doom card to use. Okay, and that stays with you. That does not go back into the game. So now let's say it's my turn, and I'm going to come over, and I went ahead and... Let's say I went over this way, and now I'm going to look at what she has. I'm going to look at the purple, and this says the top of Jessica Rabbit. Okay, so I'll put that back over here. I'm going to go over Linda, 
and I'm going to say top of Jessica Rabbit, fill that in, just like that, top part of Jessica Rabbit, okay, under her name, she's purple, okay. Now say I'm making my way around the board, and I come over here, and I look at the purple card, oh, looky what we have here, the bottom part of Jessica Rabbit. Now I know which character she is. Because now I have fulfilled a top and bottom space. Dun, dun, dun. So now I can actually make a guess. Now you don't have to have them all filled out. You can make a guess if you want to, but I'll tell you what happens if you guess it wrong. But Okay, so what happens is if you want to take a guess on who you think the character is... Anytime during your turn when you wish to guess a player's identity, announce that you're going to make a guess. Take the character cards that you put aside during setup and secretly remove the card that shows the character to be guessed. You pass this card face down to the player and ask if your guess is correct. All right, so that's pretty cool. So you put, and then ask if your guess is correct. If the player says you're guessed correctly, then you can look for the will. If you guessed incorrectly, you lose your next turn and cannot make another guess on this turn. Okay, so they say that the cards that you put aside during setup. So obviously it would be the other three characters. I remember those three cards we had face down. What I would do is, obviously I'm, I'm Roger Rabbit, so I wouldn't be in there. So if I guess she's Jessica Rabbit, I'm going to put this face down and say, Is this your character? If she looks at it and says, Yes, it is. I'm like, Okay. She doesn't announce it. You know, I don't. I don't say who you are because you you might have two other one or two other players that are still trying to figure out who she is. So if she guessed correctly, then that's good for me. Then I put it face down in front of me again. I know who she is, and now I can make my way to search for the will. Okay, so now that I guessed Linda's identity, I told her she is Jessica Rabbit. She said yes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make my way over to the will space. Okay, so what happens is when I, when I make it over here and I come over here to the road and I go over here and I land on the wheel space by exact count, by the way, you cannot bypass it or just kind of, once you land on the wheel space, all right, you can make a guess as to which one it might be, all right? If you guess incorrectly, say I pick this, I think it's this one. Uh, actually, that's the right one. <laughs> say I pick this one and it's a Jessica Rabbit letter. I lose my turn. Okay, I lose my turn, and and that's it. Then what I have to do is I have to try to guess another player's identity in order to get a second shot at it again. Okay, now since it's only a two-player game in this instance, you don't have to do it. Okay, so you just I just lose my next turn. Okay, if I guess wrong. All right, if I guess correctly, say I guess here it is. Bing, bing, bing. Okay, I'm gonna put it face up in front of me. And now I'm on my race. I'm on a race back to trying to get to my 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 home space. But then now this is when everybody has a chance to go after you with the good old um, dip cannon. Now what happens is once a player has the will. So when, once I grab the will, all the other players no longer have to try to guess any other identities. They're going to go right after me. Because now I have the will, they can try to come and steal it from me. And there's a couple different ways to do that. Now there's three ways you can steal from an opponent. By shooting the player with a dip cannon, which I'll tell you momentarily. By sending a weasel after the player. Or you can use one of these options in each turn. Well, by landing on the exact count on the player with the will. I'm sorry, that's the third one. So you can either shoot me with the cannon, because once you're in this circle here, you're in danger of getting shot by the cannon. So you got to be careful. Once you get in here, you want to get the heck out of there, okay? So I'm, I can get hit there. Or they can send a weasel after me. Or you can land on my identical space, and that those are the three different ways you can steal the will from me. So let's talk about the dip cannon. The circle in the center of the game board is the dip cannon circle. Anytime a pawn is on one of these spaces in the circle, it is vulnerable to the cannon fire, which now I am because I'm on the will space. 
To fire the dip cannon, if you choose to fire the dip cannon at an opponent, do these things in order. You need to turn your dip, car, dip cannon card, if you have one, which in this case, let's say Linda has hers, okay? You're going to put it face down. This card can only be used once during the game. So she's going to go, I'm going to go after you. So she's going to go ahead and put this face down because it, now it's been used. And I'm going to go after you. I'm going to go after Jamie. You have to announce what player you're going after. Okay. So you have to announce which player's pawn you're trying to hit. Other players can be in the circle and not be the target. Okay. So you can have a couple other people here because they're trying to get the weasel card or something like that else. They're not the target. You have to announce who your target's going to be. Now this is when the dip cannon die comes into play. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start the dip cannon on the start space. Okay. Which is right there. You couldn't see it, but it's right here. It says start. So you're going to start the dip cannon right there. Each time you roll the dip, you move the dip cannon nozzle one space toward the pawn you wish to hit. You can pass any pawn in the circle without hitting it in order to hit another pawn. So you can say, this, you say you know, player two is right here, and player three is right here, or whatever. You can bypass them, and they won't even get hit because they're not the target. Okay. Okay, so what happens is you roll the dip cannon, and oh, just like that, the dip cannon is diffused. Okay, so that's what happens with that. If she were to roll the dip, then you would move it one spot. If you roll the dip again, then it goes two spots, and so on. Now, if the dip cannon nozzle reaches the pawn you're shooting at, so say she rolled that dip four times and hit me, then you move that pawn to any of the home space on the game board. The will returns to the game board space it was on, and the next player to land on the will space can take it. Then you return the dip cannon nozzle to the start space. Your turn is then over. Wow, that's ah, that's a big, wow, that's huge. So if they shoot you, the will goes back in the same spot, so now, unfortunately, everybody knows where the will is, and I get knocked all the way back to the home space, and I have to make my way back to the will space, and this gets put back to the start. On your turn, you may fire at a player who is in the dip cannon circle, even if the player does not have the will. If hit, the pawn is sent to any home space on the board. So say player three is over here, you can decide to hit that player as well. <laughs> and knock that person out. Say they're getting really close to the will, you want to go ahead and use your, your cannon, you can actually go after them. So that's interesting. Using the weasels. Let's go after that. You can steal the will by sending out a weasel if you have a face-up weasel card to play. Now, obviously, we all have four sitting here. Okay. Let's see. Announce you are sending out a weasel. That's the first thing you got to do. Turn one of your weasel cards face down. So you're going to turn any one of these face down here. Then you're going to take the weasel token and place it alongside the space your pawn is on. So say I'm, you know, say I'm like right, and yeah, say I'm right here. You're going to put the pawn right next to me here. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to take the weasel die and roll it. So now we're going to take the, that out of there, and you're going to go to the weasel die that I showed you earlier. So the orange are the good ones, and the red one is gets bonked in the head. So he's going to keep on rolling. Oh, that's a good one. You're going to move it one space. And you're going to do one space at a time, just like the other die. The trolley die, the Benny die, and the dip die. You have to roll that consecutively until you hit the red, and then the weasel turn is over. Each time you roll the weasel, move the weasel space one token, or the token one space toward the player with the will. If you roll the bonked weasel at any time, your turn is over. You do not get the will, and the weasel token is removed from the game board. So this comes off the game board until somebody else wants to use it. If the weasel token lands in the space the player with the will is on, you immediately take the will from the player. Remove the weasel token, and you get a free roll of both dice to begin moving toward your home space. So say, for instance, I was here. Now say I was making my way back here and the weasel made it to me. That person would take the will from me and they get to roll both dice to try to get away. And you roll that many, and you go that many spaces to roll away. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now you can also revive a used weasel card. And how you do that, if you land on the weasel card space in the dip cannon circle, you can turn one of your face down weasel cards face up. So that's what the weasel card space is. If you used all four of yours, you can go back over. I'm sorry, you wouldn't use that. You can get your token back over to weasel card and you can flip one of these back over to revive it.
Now I almost forgot when you um, when you fire the dip cannon, if you choose to fire the dip cannon at an opponent, you also have to turn your dip cannon card upside down as well. I don't think I mentioned that. So when you when you use this, you got to put it upside down as well. Okay. So that you got to make sure. I don't think I mentioned that. I, so you actually will. I, so you use this as one shot. Okay. So you'd actually, if, if you use it, you could turn this over. And then you also have your small little dip cannon card as well that you can flip over as well. So you'll actually you can use it two different times if you were lucky enough to find an opponent's dip cannon card. And so you can actually have two different shots at it. So that's pretty cool. So I just wanted to clarify that because I was wondering, I had a little small dip cannon card here going, okay, what do I do with this? So that you, first you roll over this one first, and then if you have the additional one later, you can use this one and flip it over when you use the dip cannon. Okay. Uh, you can also steal the will without using a weasel card. If your pawn lands by exact count on the player with the will and you roll the weasel die once successfully, you can steal the will. Okay, so if you land on the, the space exactly with me and I have the will, all you have to do is roll the weasel die once and if you, if you roll it and you get it, then you take the will from me as well and you also get the same, you roll both dice and you, you know, say I rolled four, you go one, two, three, four, you get a little head start and you start heading back to your your game. Now, in a three to four player game, when you try to make it back to your home space with the will, you do not have to go by exact count. So say I'm right here, you roll a three or four or five, whatever, all you need is two or more, you got it. But if it's a two player game, you must roll an exact count to get back to your home space. That's the only difference between the two player versus a three or four player is the two player you have to roll an exact count back to your home space where you don't have to if it's a three or four player. So that is a pretty interesting little game. Um, that's pretty much how you play it. You go around, you first try to figure out the identity. As soon as you figure out an identity, then you're able to go after a will. And how you do that, you land on the will space. You're gonna guess uh, either it's two, three, or four cards out here. You choose which one. If you're incorrect, then you have to actually go after, uh, you have to say another person's identity otherwise you have to go back around and try to figure out another identity um and if you get now you can guess as many player identities as you want so say i say okay linda i know you are roger rabbit and player three i know that you are um one of the other players what's the uh valiant you can do that so you can have, you can do as many guesses as you want um but if you guess it wrong obviously you lose a turn okay as long as your first guess is correct, so say I said, Linda, you're, you're Jessica Rabbit, and I got it right, I can guess another player's identity. But if I get that one wrong, then that, yeah, that's it. Okay, you don't get, uh, and that, that's wrong. So as long as you have the first player correct, then you can continue on. Um, and then you can go after two, you know, you can guess two different wills if you want, if you get the two players right, and so on. So, so that is very interesting. So that's pretty much what you're trying to do. You're guessing the player's identity. If you get it right, you go after the will, you grab the will, and that's when everybody's stops looking for any of their identities. Now they're going after you for that will. They can either try to use the weasel to go after you. Uh, they can, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's a very interesting game. They have four different weasels. They can, so you, right wherever you're at, you can use a weasel card. The only time I need to go back to this weasel space here is if you need to replenish. A weasel card but you start off with four but what's tough is with the die you can only move one space at a time so you're if you're pretty far away from the player that makes it a little tough you know if you're like i'm i'm over here and the, all the other players are way over here i mean they're not going to use the weasel card because it's going to take them forever to reach me so that's the interesting part of it um but yeah so the object of the game is pretty much just finding out your uh your player's identity grab the will and make it back to your home space without either getting dipped or having a weasel go after you. So there, my friends, is how you play the Who Framed Roger Rabbit game.